Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in today's video, I would like to explain to you how you can share a Microsoft 365 group externally. Uh, there are situations when you need to invite obviously external parties, your clients, vendors, contractors into your group. Now, uh, you can just invite them into a SharePoint site, but you, sometimes you just need them to have access to everything Microsoft 365 group has to offer, right? You want them to have access to uh, plans and planner, you want them to have access to Microsoft Teams. Uh, you want them to uh, be part of the distribution list that gets provisioned as part of Microsoft 365 Group. So sometimes you just want to invite them uh, pretty much as a member uh, to the whole group. Uh, so let me explain to you how that works. There are very uh, a few very important uh, you know gotchas, I guess. I want you to be aware of. So uh, here we go. I have this group site. It's a private group. Obviously, uh, this is the SharePoint site that's connected to the Microsoft 365 group, and I have a bunch of, you know, other stuff uh, on the, uh, you know, as part of this group. I have Teams, I have planners, uh, plans in planner attached, uh, all that stuff. So I am ready to invite somebody externally. So you just click on the form members. Now let's try and add an external member. So I just add them as a member. Obviously, if you are adding someone, you know, internally, you just type in their name. Uh, we're adding someone externally uh, it actually tells you what will happen over here you see uh, but uh, let me just show you demonstrate this to you so i'm going to um, uh, pretty much uh, type in the uh, uh, external users uh, address email address here we go once i click save look at this it says could not add a user as a member why it wants us to do it from outlook all right it wants us to do it from outlook um, so let's go to Outlook. Uh, it actually offers me uh, to, to, to do it from here, but I also have the group you know, connected from Outlook right here as well. So let's go and check it out. All right, so here we go. I have the same members. This is the Outlook portion. Now, it does list me the members uh, of the group and all, but I don't see the add um, you know, uh, new members button. Why? Uh, the reason for that is because um, we I created this particular group from Microsoft Teams. When you create a group from Microsoft Teams, when you create a new team in Teams, it obviously spins up a group and a SharePoint site and all this other stuff. Uh, but you have to manage membership from Microsoft Teams. So if you want to uh, invite, uh, a, uh, essentially, uh, if you want to invite, um, you know, internal users or um, external users, what you need to do, you need to go to Microsoft Teams. All right, and uh, let me go to Microsoft Teams over here. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, essentially, where is this group right here, right? And then, you know, manage team and essentially add your internal and external members from here. Now, I actually recorded a separate video on how to add external users to Microsoft Teams, so make sure to check it out. Uh, what I would like to do is show you how to add users, um, of, you know, to the group itself, um, uh, right? Not from Microsoft Teams. Now, in my case, I have this other site, and what's different about this site versus the site I just showed you is that this site, this group, was not created from Teams because I created this from SharePoint or Outlook. I got um, you know, I got the group created, but it was not created from Teams. Now, I did get Teams, a team connected to the group after um, uh, after I created the group. Uh, but again, because I did not get, um, I did not create this group from Microsoft Teams, I can manage my membership from Outlook in this particular case. So again, you know, I will not be able to invite anyone externally from here because remember, it's going to give me an error message. So it prompts me to go to Outlook, which is what I'm going to do here. All right, so here we go. Here, this is the same group in Outlook. And because, because again, uh, I created this um, group from, you know, from any other place other than Teams, essentially, SharePoint, Outlook, maybe Plan and Planner, um, other locations. It does allow me to manage it through Outlook. As you can see, I can add additional members here. So I'm going to invite other members now. Uh, I'm going to type in the, uh, essentially, the external user's email address again. 
All right, from here. All right, and you see it recognizes automatically. That's a guest, uh, obviously, because uh, the domain is outside of the organization. Uh, and click add, and it does show you. It does actually tell you that the um, the uh, guest will have limited uh, access, and I will explain to you what that means uh, a little bit later. So we just added the guest now. Uh, let me explain to you what happens to the external party right now, to the guest. So let's check that out. So I am logged in right here in this browser as, as this user with a Gmail account I just invited. So the user just follows the prompts pretty much. All right, so a welcome email looks like this. Essentially tells the user what will, uh, you know, um, that they're part of the group now. And uh, they um, essentially prompts the user to uh, you know, go to the SharePoint site. It tells them that they're now part of the distribution list. So let's check it out. So the user again just follows the prompts, clicks on SharePoint. All right. Now, uh, remember the user, the external user, uh, right, has no idea what SharePoint is. Does not obviously have access to Microsoft 365. Uh, all right, at all. Um, so uh, we need to. The user needs to authenticate with Microsoft. So essentially. Uh, because this is the first time this user is accessing uh, a SharePoint, you know, site uh, within that organization, it prompts the user to create a new uh, account, and it will use the uh, that user's external email address as uh, pretty much a user ID. All right, and the only thing that user needs to do is just uh, assess, you know, essentially create a password and all that. Um, so let's follow the prompts. So we are setting up our password. All right, the user is obviously setting up the password. Click next. Now I'm resuming this video uh, after a few minutes. There was some additional steps I had to do, like um, you know, punch in my birthday, uh, and uh, Microsoft then sent me a temporary passcode I had to, to type in and uh, you know to prove my identity. I did all of this. So uh, now we are ready. Essentially, I got this um, you know screen after I did all the steps. And uh, let's see uh, what we now have. Essentially, just uh, the user needs to uh, accept the terms and conditions. Click accept. And the user is in. All right, uh, let's see till it loads. Uh, let's wait till it loads. Uh, now, um, what does the user have access to? So obviously, you know, the user is now part of the, uh, of the group, uh, part of the membership. Uh, what does the user have access to as part uh, as part um, a, you know of the group so obviously a SharePoint site as you can see this is the same SharePoint site uh, that the um, you've seen on a previous screen so obviously the user now had add added delete rights uh, to um, uh, to the whole site all right and then that includes not just documents but you know the ability to even modify the page all that stuff all right um, the user has access to plans in planner all right i don't have any here but the user would also get access to plans if i had uh, you know plans associated with this group all right the user becomes part of the distribution list so now the user can if somebody sends an email to finance at sharepointmaven.com or whatever the you know email address is for that group uh the user will get uh an email all right as part of the distribution list and also the user can send an email to that address as well all right, so all members will be notified. All right, uh, the user will also get access to uh, Microsoft Teams. All right, so let's uh, let me prove that to you. Here we go. This is the uh, screen that the user gets when uh, that user uh, you know uh, accesses tries to access the Teams portion of the group. All right, uh, just I uh, guess some introductory uh, screens. All right, here we go. You see, uh, this is the team uh, uh, that is uh, part of the uh, that is part of that group. So uh, the user does have access to Microsoft Teams. All right, the user does not have access to the email portion, or, or right, the, the Outlook portion, I should say, uh, of the group. So uh, the calendar, right? Remember, the group also uh, got a calendar as part of the um, you know, applications tied to the group. So if the user tries to go um, uh, to to a mailbox, for example, or tries to access the group calendar, uh, essentially, as you can see, 
uh, it tells that the user will not have access to that, all right? Uh, again, this is something only internal users will be able to see. Uh, so if, um, uh, if uh, you are inviting an external user, the external user will not have access to other Outlook portions. So the ability to, again, view the calendar uh, for the group uh, or uh, the ability to view conversations, right, uh, for the group, that those will not be available uh, to the outside recipient. Uh, but other than that, I mean, obviously the user does have access to some of this other uh, assets I mentioned to you. Again, the user does have access to the SharePoint site, part of the, becomes part of the distribution list, uh, has access to plans in Planner, as well as uh, becomes part of uh, a team uh, in Microsoft Teams. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you in this particular video. Hopefully you learned something new. Uh, as always, happy to see you on my blog, SharePointMaven.com as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.